Good evening, my dear fangs. Happy Friday. I hope everyone's week has been amazing and you're all doing well and staying healthy. Because that would suck if you started off the new year sick. I know because I started off last year being sick with COVID. As some of you might have known, remembered, or what have you. But it's a new year. So hopefully things go much better than last year. Fingers crossed. Thank you so much to the new subscribers. You're amazing. I greatly appreciate your support. It's a huge help to the channel and myself. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I've been hearing a lot about the black phone. Even Stephen King mentioned how great this movie is. So while I was watching or scrolling through Amazon Prime, I noticed it was available. I caved and gave it a watch. There most likely will be spoilers. I don't know if I can keep it spoiler free because there's a lot of interesting things I noticed about this movie while I was watching it. I'll let you know if I transition to spoilers beforehand, so don't worry. I got you covered. <laughs> At first I thought it was based on a true story. To my surprise, it wasn't. But it just felt like a real serial killer case, which I found out was the point. Joe Hill explained that the grabber was inspired by Gacy, which seems accurate since Gacy's victims were all between the ages of 14 to 21. However, Gacy didn't tend to find the teen boys on the streets. Instead, they worked for him. Well, the majority of them worked for him. There were a few, of course, that he took from the streets, uh, but I think that was just pure opportunity kind of deal. Uh, I did discuss Gacy in a past video, mostly about his childhood and upbringing. I didn't really go into his victims or the cases surrounding that. Uh, if you'd like to check out the video about his childhood that I created, the video is up above me in the card. Should be, anyways. <laughs> I'll leave a link in the description about his victims if any of you are interested in learning more about those, it's fine by me. Uh, the black phone depicts how terrifying it might have been or must have been for a teenager being abducted, unaware of what their assailant wants with them or if they'll ever see their families again. It also showed how difficult the lives of children can be, dealing with bullies, abusive parents, school, and everything in between. Uh, feeling like there's no one who will listen to them or care about them, feeling like you're utterly alone. Add in a serial killer just makes it that much worse. So this is where I'm going to get into the spoilers, just letting you know. So, fair warning. I thought the different masks the Grabber wore were interesting. It seemed like he may have felt a sense of guilt since he wore a demon devil mask. Uh, that's just my interpretation of the symbolism behind that. The phone in the basement I thought was kind of weird. It's not usually where a phone is, especially when it doesn't work. You think you would just take it out. I at first thought maybe the phone was going to be a way to send messages to the kidnapped victim from the killer or another victim of his trap somewhere else somehow they could communicate with each other but no one else i don't know how that would work but just what i thought you know i found it creepy how the grabber would just appear out of the blue it was unnerving and gave me such a bad feeling when he's in the room staring at finney and finney had no idea he was in the room really freaking creepy he really felt for his victims and hoped everything would work out in the end the ending, I'll admit, was a little shocking. I didn't think the grabber would kill his own brother. I was hoping his brother would save Finny. I had a feeling the grabber was going to show up at that moment, though, so that was a little... not as much of a build-up, I guess. I figured it. It's usually what happens. I was just hoping that Finny would get rescued, regardless. Um, however, I think having Finney save himself kept with the, the theme that sometimes you need to help yourself because there isn't always going to be someone there that can rescue you. Sometimes you do have to rely on yourself. I also thought one scene was very interesting. 
uh, there's a grainy image of the grabber holding balloons. And it kind of reminded me of Sinister. The grainy found footage of the kids murdering their families that the owner finds in Sinister. It just was really reminiscent of it. And the fact that Ethan Hawke played in Sinister as the victim, and in this he's the killer, which I honestly didn't know it was him, to be honest. It didn't sound like him. It was very interesting how well he did at playing the grabber. I thought at the end Finney was dead. And part of that was because of him standing outside of a house that looked identical to the one he escaped from and the police going into a different house. So it just seemed like they went to the wrong house or what have you and found the empty house or what have you. I don't where the bodies were buried. Meanwhile, he was getting murdered in the other house, is what I was thinking. And him killing the grabber was all in his head. I don't know if that makes sense. But that's just what I thought at first. Did any of you get that feeling? Or was it just me? <laughs> I like misread the whole thing. I thought it was great that we got closure and a happy ending. And that was really nice. I'm glad that they did that instead of going where I thought they were going to go with <laughs> the route they were going to take. What did you think about the movie? Did you enjoy it or found it predictable? Uh, that's what some of the negative reviews I read stated that it was predictable. For me it was a good th uh, thriller. I didn't find it as a horror movie. I, It's more of a thriller to me. I didn't find it scary. I think that's why. Uh, I'd give it a 4 out of a 5 because I'd probably watch it again. I really liked how they filmed the movie. It seemed like it could have been based on a true story, which I think is incredible if you can trick the audience like that. Thank you so much for watching and sticking around to the end. If you enjoyed this review, click the like and subscribe buttons to show your support. It's free, but a huge help to the channel and myself. Also appreciate it. Next week, I'll be reviewing the menu and discussing the true crime case behind the movie Three Billboards. I'll leave links in the description on where you can stream or rent the movie. If you can't wait for the upcoming content, click the bell icon to never miss a video. Have a magnificent weekend and take care until next time. Bye everyone!